Welcome to another episode of Mentorit TV, where we are focusing on not what we are, but what we can be one day. So today, welcome with me, uh, Alexander Graf von Schlieffen. He's one of Europe's top astrologers, artists and authors. He's authored a couple of books. He regularly writes for magazines such as Gala and Vanity Fair. He also does private consultancy. So I've been with Alexander and I've had my astrological yeah, construction featured by him. Very interesting indeed. And today we would like to have a look together in what 2020 and the current crisis, COVID crisis actually means. Was it something that we could have seen before? Something that is going to feature in a long term? So please welcome with me, Alexander. Alexander, I'm so happy to have you on Mentorit TV. Good morning to you. Good morning. It's an honor for me to be on your presentation. Thank you very much. Well, let me first of all get straight away into the question of COVID-19 crisis to creation. I want to draw out a quote um, of you, and you said in this quote, 2020 will mark the end of an era of the predominance of strategic marketing that began back in 1982. So enlighten us. What sort of cycle era are we in and where do we actually, perhaps you should start with that, where do we come from? We come from a 38-year-old cycle. It's a 30-year-long cycle. In astrology, we work with cycles. So we look at a moment when two planets meet in the heavens, then they, they, they start their trip around the sun, but always with a different speed. At some point they are opposing each other. This is like an equivalent to the full moon. And then they meet again, but they always meet in a different era of the zodiac. And these cycles, we have like two year cycles, we have 20 year cycles, we have uh, 38 year cycles, we have 200 year cycles, we have 700 year cycles. These cycles, they mark an era of time which is specified by the astrological criteria of the zodiac sign which, in which these constellations are taking place in. And the cycle between the two planets, Saturn and Pluto, this is the cycle that we are talking about, somehow defines the rules and um, the way we navigate politics, economy and culture, the way we become successful in society, in politics, economy and culture. Uh, it's 2020 is a phenomenal year. And I mean, we astrologers, we knew this already beforehand because usually there is one cycle beginning every few years. In 2020, there are three cycles beginning within 11 months. And this is something that only happens every few hundred years. Mm -hmm. So for an astrologer, it was easy to anticipate that 2020 would become a striking year of transformation, of change, and of radical changes of paradigms. Then we look at the origin of the cycles, we look at the characteristics of the cycle, and then we look at the sign in which the cycles take place in order to deduct our interpretation. Well, that is an interesting one. Let me just pick uh, you up on the word paradigm and yeah. the shift from the paradigms that were in the last cycle and that dominated and what you could have anticipated the next cycle may bring. Can you yeah. perhaps uh, pinpoint what were the main themes or values of our last cycle preparing us perhaps yes. even to where we are right now? I'm willing to do this. I would just add uh, uh, one more detail to the three big cycles. So the first cycle began in, um, in January 12th, and this is the 30-year cycle. The second cycle on April 5th, but the beginning will take a couple of months. The beginning of this second cycle will end in, on November 12th, and the third cycle will begin on December 21st. The third cycle is the final cycle. And I'm, I have to talk about this first before I go to the 38 year cycle, only to understand. The third cycle is uh, between the planets Jupiter and Saturn. 
And when they meet in the heavens in the past, it was the most significant constellations for the astrologers, like thousands of years ago. And whenever this constellation happened, they said, it's the end of the old king and it's the beginning of a new era with the new king. Since we don't have royal structures anymore, it's not about kings, but it's about images that guide us. It's like projections of ideas, how we want to be, how we want to act, how we want to be responsible. The star of Bethlehem was supposed to be a Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, for example. And um, we have had conjunctions between these two planets for 200 years in the element of Earth. And that means it was the beginning of the Industrial Revolution and the beginning of capitalism. So we had 200 years of capitalism and Earth symbolizes material values and it symbolizes, of course, money. So in these 200 years, we have built up a system based on the market and money and financial values. The cycle that begins, which is the third cycle this year in December, will be the starting point of a 200 year era of these cycles in the element of air. So there will be an incredible shift of paradigms in terms of earth is about making money, it's about creating physical value, and it's also somehow about competition. Mm -hmm. The element air is about collaboration. It's about networking and collaboration. So we are entering an era of 200 years where we will be faced with a complete new value system. Values will change completely. And the thing that's happening already now in this particular lockdown area in time is that people start to react and change values, reflect on values and reflect on what is important, what is not important. And since we are not allowed to have physical contact, we have contact via the networks. And the importance of the network on a human level has never been as strong as it is now, because in the past, the use of the network was somehow sloppy. It was not always filled with content. It was used for marketing, for self-marketing, to be playful, but it was never like a psychological necessity in order to be able to connect with anybody. And that is somehow anticipating the third cycle that will go on for 200 years, where we will be in an era which is dominated by the element air, which has to do with collaborations. This is also the reason why I paint big mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Because mushrooms are between animals and plants, we are not quite sure yet. And the main thing they do is not, is like the collaboration with this gigantic subterrestrial network that they do have. What's the name of the things? It's called the micel. Mm -hmm. It's their network. And they, what they do, what, they, what mushrooms do is they collaborate. They transport information. They help plants. They make the communication in the woods. And they are, in, I mean, they've been always been doing this, but we only recently discovered the significance of mushrooms and this symbolism it can be for a future society because our western society is still built on rivalry it's still the ultimate result of a patriarchal society and this is going to change radically because we can't work in a patriarchal society anymore it won't carry us into the future so now i'm going to talk about this 38 year cycle the cycle the key to power which is a sub-cycle to the one that I've been talking about now. So the cycle that began in 1982 began in the sign of Libra. Libra is about how to wrap something in order to present it as something beautiful. Be Libra is about the package. Libra is about selling things. And Libra is about building bridges between different worlds. And it's about how you can make something look attractive. So what happened in the 80s, there was from one day to the next somehow, there was a radical shift from even in culture, 
from a kind of politically motivated intentions towards self-representation and fashionable. So it, it was important to look good all of a sudden. It was important to show off. It was important to be part of like a, an advertisement spot. So what we can say about these 38 years is apart from the incredible development of technologies and internet and, and computers, it's been an era of marketing. In this 38 years, marketing has been more important than the content. The, so the significance of a product was not its quality, it was its ability to be sold, whether it's good or bad, it, it didn't matter. So we, I think we hardly ever had a time in the history of men or Western culture where content and values were so insignificant as in the past 38 years. So we had public relationship companies everywhere. Everybody was promoting things, but nobody was working on content. Nobody was working on quality, I think. And if you look at the culture, because culture is always a mirror of what's going on in society. Culture had, is, was completely affirmative to the capitalistic system. It was never a creative counterpoint, but it pretended to be. Because the result of this radical marketing strategy was that every area of life became part of the economy, every era. And the significance of a high culture is that science and culture should somehow be free, somehow be free from the market. And we need patronage in order to support science, development, spirituality, and art. But when these fields become part of the market, it means they lose their liberty. They lose the origin of their creativity. Yes, they're commercialized and, and thus become yeah. something else that they were originally meant to be, a free spirit, as you were saying, to express uh, itself. Thank you very much. It's perfect. Yeah. It's a perfect way to put it. And um, that means the parameters via which, for example, an artist or a, a doctor would survive would not be around the content of his work, but about the, the, the commercial aspect, whether he can sell the work. So imagine a doctor nowadays, it, it's not enough to be a good medical, to give good medical treatments. You have to be a businessman at the same time. But if you are a doctor, it doesn't imply naturally that you have skills to sell things. That's why we have so many bad doctors in our Western world. <laughs> That's why we have so many bad artists. And um, it is, you know, the ultimate stream of this is the self-marketing of the people in the virtual world. Yes, exactly. Let me just, let me just um, basically dil, d dig into this concept, the me, myself and I culture. Because what I'm hearing, what you were saying right now, we come out of a cycle where we did actually build value, materialistic value. Uh, be it the internet, be it the interconnectivity, be it the communication system, be it the social media. However, its actual use, i.e. the content, was more making a use of all these great gadgets as exactly that, a gadget, as a toy. And perhaps now it's moving into being more of a tool of real communication with real content, not just to, you know, being selfish, i.e. having a selfie made and, and thus becoming a self-promoting star. So, so I wonder, do you think this is actually what's happening right now? Because what we did create in terms of technology advancement um, is of value. I guess, is of value. How we filled that with and how we actually treated it with, with what values is something different. And is that transition, is it right now to, to go towards quality now that we do actually have the hardware? Yes. You, you know, we didn't, we didn't create content. We created structures. Yeah. And we created structures that will allow us in the future to work incredibly efficiently with content but we have only created fantastic structures and neglected content 
the first cycle that started in, in, uh, on January 12th, the Saturn-Pluto cycle, now is in the sign of Capricorn. Let me just add one thing for, to the Libra thing. Libra is about packages, packaging. Mm -hmm. Everything that you can buy nowadays is wrapped in many layers of plastic. Libra is also about balance. And nature is out of balance because of all the plastic packages that are swimming in the sea. Literally. This, this Literally. is a dark metaphor, but it's somehow, it's so true. And um, so the new cycle is at the sign of Capricorn. Capricorn is completely different than Libra. Capricorn is about experience. It's about quality and it's about things that take shape in time, that need time in order to grow structures that you, you you don't build a structure out of nothing you know you take you need time saturn is about time cycles it's about the time that it needs you know like the monthly cycle which is adequate to the female cycle the cycle of becoming and there's a peak in each cycle and there's an ending in each cycle and we have completely lost the knowledge and the consciousness and the respect of cycles we have created a structural 24 seven availability culture, which kind of, and you know, the most trendy illness is a fake illness. It's called burnout. There is no burnout. People are not burned out. They just don't listen to the cycle inside themselves anymore. And then they lose contact to what they need inside. And therefore there's a loss of connection to the inner world, to the natural world, rather than a, a burnout is a phenomena, but not an origin, you know? Well, let me, let me just um, um, interrupt you there, Alexander. And I wonder what came first, that we just built structures or that we lost contact to ourselves and we kind of are not in touch anymore with the cycles, with the respect for nature. What, what came first? What drove what, you think? This is a brilliant question. Because probably in order to build the structures that we have built in the past 38 year, old, year long cycle, we needed to be disconnected in order to be so busy building up these structures. And if we would have been occupied with content, we, maybe we would not have been able to build these structures so fast. So we have to pay an incredible price for the lack and the loss of content and cyclical awareness that we probably needed in order to, to be like a robot, in order to build like a robot, to build these structures so fast. You know, this is an idea that comes to my mind because you, you asked me this incredible question, you know. Mm -hmm. Could be that, you know, for this time it was, it required a lack of soul in the world in order to work like a machine, you know. And moving this conversation on, there's a couple of questions I have. A, would an astrologer be able to see what is happening and, and like this inflation of this detachment to our values and to our humanity or to nature? Was that visible in the science of astrology? Could it have been communicated and managed perhaps into society? And looking at you know, the, the constellations going forward, how can we really focus perhaps the attention of humans, people in general, that values ought to be shifting? Because it might not be necessarily what everybody thinks right now, that this is the chance to reboot a certain yeah. value system. It was anticipable. And I, I often wrote about it, but people said, are you crazy? Because the time was not about content and soul. The time was about just being out there, rushing like a machine, looking good, selling things, marketing things. And if you came and it said like, this is like too cynical and stop and see there's something like this. And if you'd said so, people said, what are you talking about? How do you what? write that? <laughs> are you from the middle ages, man? You know, it's now and it's since a year and a half that I'm invited everywhere to give, to give talks about this. And it's now that people are open it. And now people are hungry, they are starving for food, for the soul, for a knowledge, what's going on. You know, for us as an, astro as an astrologer, 
Yeah, or let's put it vice versa, sorry. For most people, what's happening in the world now is based on COVID. So they say, this is the reason why the world is the way it is now. For us as astrologers, we say, there are three new cycles. And we talked about that there will be a complete shift in values, in criteria, quality will come back, time will come back. You know, most of the salons that I gave last year had the subtitle, The Return of Time. That's what was the title of when I talked about 2020. There will be a return of time. I'm astounded by myself how radical time is returning now. How radically people are faced with time in a way they haven't been faced for ages. What do I do with my time at home? How do I fill time? What means time? You know, and that means to get a consciousness about what time and what cycles might mean. So for, for an astrologer, Corona is like, he, he's like a soldier that fulfills what the cycles want. But it's not in itself the origin. But for most people in the Western world, yeah. since they are trained to look um, cause and effect. This is the only, it's the male way of thinking. Cause and effect, cause and effect. Nothing else, and nothing in between. From the astrological point of view, it was possible to anticipate that 2020, there will be incredible changes. Quality will come back. Local craftsmanship will come back. Everybody says, buy local now, you know? Mm. People have to do things in their house some people start to work with their hands. People only have been working on the computer for years. Mm. So, but I'm, you know, I'm not a clairvoyant. I'm an astrologer, so I interpret the cycles. And so I did not see the virus, but I see it as an expression of the new era that wants to manifest. If there's not a situation that will prevent us from continuing the way we've been doing things before, we need a break in order to change. And if the break is not radical, the, yeah. the shift will not be internalized. So people will not feel what the new era will be about. So and that's I, why I take... Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Please continue. That's why it takes, it needs, we need time in order to, to approach a point where a rebooting will be possible. And, yeah. and this is exactly, I mean, the concept of time, I find that very, very interesting what you were saying, that all of a sudden people actually think about time. Usually we think about, we don't have time. <laughs> or how do we get everything cramped in, uh, in the time we have, despite all the gadgets that just help us in our time efficiency and in our time management. You've got thousands of books coming out. But if we look at our world, globally, Alexander. I mean, you and I, we are very fortunate being in the Western world, fortunate in the sense that, uh, you know, we can perhaps take that minute to think about time because we don't have to think about how do I get my next meal? How do I, how do I bring my family through the next month? And I wonder whether these kind of um, astrological constellations, which bring certain vibes and energy will also affect people, let's say in less developed countries where the concept of time is only how many hours do I have to find some food for my family? Yes, but you know, the, the constellation is also, Capricorn is not only about building up new structures and building up structures based on quality rather than marketing. So, uh, Capricorn is also about the result of something we have been doing for ages. So everybody, every culture, is faced with the consequences of decisions that have been taken years and decades away in the past. Yes. So it's like, no matter whether you live in a so-called third world country or in a first world country or whatever, you are faced with the consequences of cultural decisions, political decisions, economical decisions that some of them start at the beginning of the last century, because this is how we work with the cycles. We look, when did this cycle of cycles begin? And what origin of the cycle? Then we also have a very interesting conflict in the Western world that has its root in the year 632 
I mess it sometimes. It's either 623 or 32. So the two and three, I, I'm not, you know. It's the year of Mohammed's death. It's the beginning of the Islamic expansion. And it's the beginning of the Middle Ages. And many things that we have to deal with in the, in the world have their origin in this particular year, 632 or 23. Um, and so we are facing a very multi-layered situation where we have to redefine things and where we have rid of things. And of course, we also have to pay prices for something we did on, let's say, on the shoulders of other people, of other cultures or whatever. And this is going to be the beginning of a, of, a, of a huge transformation of the whole world because it's about a 200 year cycle. It's about a 700 year cycle. Everything collides now. So we have to face very, very old cultural paradigms from other eras of, of, of human being, you know? And this is the interesting thing when with astrology. You can see that there is a connection between the year 1913, 1848 and 632 and 1305, there's a connection between these moments in time. And all of a sudden there will be a theme, like a red thread between these different phases, you know? And I, I mean, this is a very big scheme. Yeah, and, and I think from that point of view, what would you say us in our lifetime, considering these cycles beginning now, and there is this seismic shift, which will uh, impact our societies, political structure, perhaps uh, economic structures as well. How do you think it will manifest um, over the next, let's say, 20 or 30 years as in a positive, as, as, a, as in a, a positive momentum? A positive outlook would be, because Capricorn is about the responsibility for old values, and and quality and what we have forgotten in the past 38 years is an internally felt responsibility for what we have created over hundreds of years let's say heterogeneity pluralism a multicultural society this is a value but it requires a strong attitude to defend it we didn't think about it. We took things for granted. And now we have to stand up for our values. So it requires more of like your, um, the, what, what is called this thing on the back? Um, spine? A bit of, oh, yeah, yeah. Rückgrat, yes. You, you need a bit more spine <laughs> perhaps to, to go ahead. To we have to strengthen the spine in order to stand up for the values. Yes. And that is, we can build up something based on quality and substance. This is the one side of the development. Build up on something real, something that, 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 that you can feel, where you can feel the quality, where you can see the quality. Something real, not something virtual and something fake. And then we can use the technology to spread these things into the world, from the local to the world. So we, we can approach the technology in a completely new way, in a more substantial way coming back with content, you know? But there's also um, a tendency of so-called weak people, I, I have to say, I have to say it that way, yeah. that look for external structures, you know, that look, it's like the medieval part of the consciousness of the people that want old structures, that want strict rules, but when you act out of a rule or out of a principle, you don't take a choice. It's the principle that replaces your own responsibility. So this is the big question for the next 20 years. Am I being responsible? Accountability. For Accountability for the choices I make, the actions I take, and then I don't have anybody else to blame either. Yes. And I don't hide behind a law or a structure or a principle. And that's why we have this right-wing movement now mm. at the turn of these two cycles, which is kind of to remind us of what we don't need. Mm. Because these are people who want to fall back into controlled eras. They want to have control 
overlying a homogeneous structure. They don't want to expose themselves to the beauty of heterogeneity. They are afraid, they are fearful people, they are driven by fear. And they have to remind us how important it will be to stand up against them and not just talk, just to be there and say, no fucking way. Yes. You know? Yes. I think I have to bleep that one over, but that's fine, Alexander. <laughs> um, nice. No, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Let me just say that, um, which is quite interesting what you were saying right now. So you have on one hand the tendency where people are looking for structures, but now that we have a structure imposed, i.e. the lockdown imposed by the government, we are seeing at the same time that all of a sudden people start valuing the freedom they took for granted before, something that you were saying earlier on. And, uh, and, and I wonder, you know, in these kind of situations, if there is a crisis, will there be a lack of freedom and the acceptance of that structure? Will it also be part of the next, next uh, cycles? Or will people just now say, hey, I'm free, means I can do with my time what I want. And yes, I'm going to take responsibility. Are we mature enough as humans to really do that? It's an, another wonderful, brilliant question. This situation forces us to face our ability to be responsible. So it means when we want to keep our freedom, we have to be more responsible than before. So it, it kind of pushes us into the constellation of Capricorn. It says, I want my freedom. I want the tradition of being free. And I'm willing to be responsible, but I don't want anyone else to take over and tell me when I'm responsible or not. That means I decide when I go out and I will behave responsibly. Mm -hmm. But if somebody tells me, I'm not you're not gonna go out because the law says you're not gonna go out, this is gonna kill the people. And there will be, so there, is, there are a lot of discussions already now going on about this particular question. But this is the best situation that can happen from that perspective, that we have to, find a very clever way how to negotiate with these external structures, with the political structures. As I say this, there's a police car coming, out, coming in through my window. <laughs> you see yeah, or... into your words. <laughs> okay. So this is like, we have to learn to redefine responsibility in a completely new personal way. And this is what this situation is asking us. Yes, and I think it, is, it, it matches so well with what you were saying earlier on to, look, we are burned out. We really kind of sold our internal soul to the devil or whoever. We are empty. So now we are perhaps ready to be filled with quality and content. And we are ready to listen. We are ready to let emotions again, uh, you know, happen. And it is okay. It's not efficient, but still it's okay. It doesn't make money, but it is part of a very important evolvement uh, of humanity. Yes, definitely. I yeah. would definitely agree. But you know, if there's not a shock, you don't change things. We need like something like a rupture, like a friction in order to, 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 to rebuild things. You know, this marketing stuff, yeah. public relation, nobody gives a whatever at this moment because life is about something else. And if, you, if people hassle you with advertisement, people say, just get away with that. We need something substantial now. It's about basic questions of life, whether it's about survival, the economical situation, the psychological situation, the, the cultural, the social situation, you know, everything will be redefined. But if you have to put it in three words as to whoever is watching this, Alexander, what would you say how to use uh, this crisis with COVID-19 really as a catalyst to perhaps change something or evolve something in one's personal life and thus contribute with one's own actions mm -hmm. or thoughts or yeah. vibes to, to the whole of this, this dy dynamism which is, which is supposed to now really settle in. Yeah. It's about becoming aware of what's really important, not only for myself, also for us as a culture, um, and how 
can we redefine our value system according to the awareness of responsibility? What do we really need and what don't we need? And there have been many things that we didn't need at all and that we spend a lot of time and a lot of money with. And this is not substantial, but it will be about what can be like substantial foundation and quality, not only for now and the future, but also based on what we already know from the past. What, can, what should we develop? What should we further develop? And what can we get rid of for now? Yeah. In order to set up a new structure for society. Alexander, this is... This is more than three words, I'm sorry. No, that's fantastic, no, no. Uh, so insightful. Alexander, if people want to find you, find out more about you, and find out more about this science of astrology, see you as an artist, read you as an author, where do they find you? They find me in the social media. I have a website. <laughs> Talking about... <laughs> yeah. I'm not very good at this. But I do have a website as an astrologer, as a painter. I have an Instagram astrological account. I have my Astropod, which is the weekly um, podcast. And we talk about the big constellations and the weekly ones at the same time. And I do readings for people on the phone, most of, mostly on the phone because pe people don't live around the corner, you know, despite the fact that we are not allowed to do so. But... I do it on Skype, I do it in English, in German, and in Italian, but I can't do it in French, unfortunately. And uh, I can do readings, you know, for, for individuals, for companies, for relationships, for children, whatever, you know. Astrology is complex and beautiful. And it is a science and to be taken seriously, it's not uh, just some sort of fluffy kind of clairvoyance, which you were mentioning earlier on. Thank you so much, Alexander. Graf von Schlieffen to have joined me here on Mentorage TV. It's just one of those creations of 2020, hopefully very positive as well. Thank you all for joining me on this episode. Many more to come. And remember, we are here not to be, but to become. See you next time. Thank you very much.